I just wish I could give you all a big hug. Never mind, big virtual hug. There we go. Welcome. Welcome on this rather miserable day as well, isn't it? And again, it's gone chilly. So if you're feeling tight and stiff this morning, if you've again just noticed that the drop in temperature does affect your limbs, and it does, it can affect the stiffness in the joints, it can affect our ability to be able to move around in the morning. So just know that the environment and the climate can have a massive impact on the way we move, the way we feel, physically, mentally, and emotionally. So with that in mind, I should try and keep you all cheerful this morning. What you'll need, cheerful and open and energized. Today, we're gonna to use our cans, we often do, and if you're new, welcome. What we usually do for those that are new or haven't joined for a while is, if you don't have a set of weights at home, and there's no presumption that everyone has, I don't, then the next best thing, so that you're still getting that lovely sense of firming the arms and using resistance work, is to grab a couple of cans from the kitchen cupboard, okay? So just grab two cans, have a quick look on the back and make sure that the weight is the same. About 400 grams for sort of pulses, sometimes 420 for things like baked beans, for some reason they weigh more. So just check that both of your cans are level and of the same weight. And again, if you're new, the best sort of chair to use for yoga is one without wheels and without armrests. And ideally, like me, it's on a surface that's non-slip. So it doesn't have to be a yoga mat, but somewhere where you're not going to slip and slide, that you're going to be fairly safe and steady. And when you sit yogis, just make sure that your feet are on the same level, okay? So they're on the same level, either carpet or floor, but they're not sort of uneven. Now, bare feet, it's entirely optional. I'm just taking the socks off today. You can do all of the exercises with your feet, with socks on and even with trainers on. That's the beauty of them. They're all part of the anti rheumatic group of exercises and you can do them with trainers or socks, but you will feel your feet better and you'll get a foot workout better if you have bare feet. So again, it's entirely up to you. The last bit of housekeeping is just remember to bring some water to the class, okay? So if you haven't got any water now, just go off if you can, grab a little bit of water in a glass or any sort of herb tea, something to keep you hydrated, okay? And if you've got an injury, if you're recovering, maybe from a mild sort of neck ache or maybe knees are a little bit sore today, then just go gently, okay? Do as much or as little of the practice as you can. And it's something I repeat over and over because I think sometimes when you can see me going at, at it and maybe quite fast, then there's that propensity to push yourself. And that's great, but within reason, okay? I would say a therapeutic window and we don't really want to push further than that, okay? Yes, you want to feel a sort of post-exercise ache that we've worked the muscles, but not straining them. And that's key. Okay, should we sit and arrive in the space together now, yogis? What we'll do is just make sure we're sitting tall. Use that back of the chair like an added spine to keep you tall in your chair. And we'll turn the palms up for most today. And I thought we'd just hold a little mudra at the beginning and the end for energy. So when the weather's like this, it's not very inspiring. And if we're lacking energy, if we want to sort of think about springtime, new beginnings, and to face the challenges in the future, then this is the hand gesture that's said to help. And it's said to give us energy. And it's one I come back to whenever I feel a bit fatigued or a little bit flat. So we bring the thumb, the long finger, and the ring finger, known as the ring finger. That was the one next to the little finger. So I'll just say that again. Thumb, pads of your thumb, your long finger, and your ring finger are all touching. So it sort of looks like antler um, fingers that are resting. So it's your index finger and your little finger that are remaining just relaxed and extended. Turn the palms uppermost. And with those three pads touching, let's just close the eyes for a few minutes and draw our awareness to our breathing. Now, I don't mind if you have to breathe through your mouth, through slightly parted lips, that's absolutely fine. But if you can and it's comfortable, close the lips gently and just start to breathe through your nostrils. You don't need to change the breath or alter it, simply close the mouth and just begin gently to breathe through your nostrils if you can. Let's do this together. So I'm gonna breathe in and breathe out gently through the nostrils, my mouth gently closed. Eyes closed if you wish or just gazing softly ahead. 
And all we're going to do is take eight slow breaths here, yogis, in the energy mudra, pads of the thumb, long finger and ring finger touching. And I want you to just visualize, if you can, a beautiful blossoming garden. Perhaps it's your own garden. Perhaps it's somewhere where you've been in the past. And just allow yourself to enjoy the various forms of nature. And know that this garden is somewhere you can go to whenever you feel a little flat or stressed or anxious. It can be your personal retreat. Now, the lovely thing about this as we breathe in and out is ahead of us is an empty flower bed. And I want you to plant something there that bears rich fruits for you. It could be a project. It could be a conversation or a relationship, etc. But I'd like you to join me in planting something in that empty flower bed that bears rich fruits for you. As I said, it could be a project, a conversation, a relationship, a friendship, etc. Watch how that little seed sprouts and develops and ends up blossoming to bear rich fruits. And ask yourself who should benefit from these fruits. Whilst visualising or imagining that if you can, enjoy another four slow breaths with me. As we plant our seeds, watch them grow and receive a rich harvest, which we can thankfully accept. So we've planted something in our imaginary flower bed and we're just watching it grow. And I think it's lovely if we can think of a friendship or project or a relationship, something that bears rich fruits for you, yogis. Whilst you're doing that, remember to keep the breath relaxed and even. Let's take two more deep breaths here together. Plant your seeds. Take care of them. Receive a rich harvest, of which you thankfully accept. Now let's take a deep breath in and out together now. Good. Inhaling. And once more, exhaling together. And then just letting that flower bed and the garden gently fade, begin to fade in your mind's eye very slowly become aware of where you are again. Take another deep breath in for me. And as you exhale, gently release the fingers and open the eyes. Well done, yogis, and just relax here. Now the purpose of that is that it stills the mind. It perhaps quietens us down. If we've been busy trying to get ready for the practice, then it allows us to come into this moment quietly and settled. And it means we are in the present moment and we've signposted ourselves in the right direction for the practice. So we'll do it at the end. It's a lovely way to open and close your practice. And more importantly, it allows you to focus on your breathing, which is crucial for any sort of movement or exercise. OK, so thanks for that. Thanks for joining me with that. It was lovely. We'll start by today warming and energizing the feet. So we're going to sit with the feet hip width apart. Again, bare feet, socks or trainers, you can do this in either. Just start to scrunch up the toes, flick them away. Now let's add the breath to that, breathing in as we scrunch up the toes, breathing out as we flick away. Let's do six more. Inhale and exhale, good. Now remember to sit tall, relax breath. Now what do I mean by that? I mean just a natural, normal inhalation and exhalation. You're not straining the breath as you breathe in or breathe out, but you can add the breath to the movement. Inhale as you scrunch the toes, exhale as you flick away. Let's do two more together. Breathing in, that's it, breathing out. Once more together if you can, gently scrunching toes up, flicking them away. Now lift them if you can, and I want you to just splay them down or fan them apart as you place them on the floor. Lift them, give them another wiggle if you can, and fan them apart on the floor. Twice more if you can, lifting them, wiggle, that's it, they may feel quite cold today, 
and fan them apart on the floor. And once more lifting and wiggling them and fan them apart on the floor. Yes, lovely. Now that can bring on a bit of cramp, so I'm hoping you didn't get cramp. If you did, just stop, massage the area and join us in a moment. Well, let's just raise the right foot, not particularly high, no higher than our hip, and just start to flex it. A flexion is simply pointing the toes down and bringing them towards you, but we know it is a flexion. And I want you to do six of those, a breath in and a breath out as one round. So six more slowly. And the reason we do this is because a quarter of the bones in our feet, or sorry, in our body are in our feet. So there's over 214 ligaments there, over 52 bones and about 23 muscles. So I want you to just see your feet today as in, you know, immensely important. They are a really solid piece of kit in our body. So just taking a moment to wow ourselves with those statistics. That's it. Now, let's start to untie the knots in the ankle. The ankle being part of the foot means that, again, a quarter of those bones are in the ankle and foot. And without the ankle, of course, we wouldn't be able to stand. So it bears a lot of weight. And it also bears a lot of force, a lot of gravity there. And all I'm doing is taking a moment to just rotate in both directions with my ankle joint. The slower, the better with that. Both directions and then release down, good. Okay, we'll switch sides, Yogi. So left foot now, just taking it off the floor gently, flexing backwards and forwards six times. Left number one, inhale, exhale as you do so, breathing in, breathing out. And if you feel like doing a few more, then by all means do. Often we notice that one side can feel quite different to the other. So just noticing that in your own body, those left and right differences is a really good way to sort of become aware of what's going on in our body. I'll do one more with you, breathing in, breathing out, then start to just slowly rotate the left ankle in one direction, so between six and eight of those slowly. Of course, you can do more if you wish to. And then the opposite direction between six and eight gently. And again, if there's any discomfort, do please stop. I'll do one more rotation with you and release, good. Well, I want us to go straight into working the mind and the body and communicating both. So we're going to lift both together now, and we're just going to flex them forwards and back. That's it. Just a couple more of those. They're never wasted because they stretch the entire front of the foot and the back of the heel. Bring the feet together, and then just, again, a couple more of those flexions. One more if you can. Good. Now, if you can keep the feet together, have a go at drawing some big circles now. That's it. About four of those slowly. Doesn't matter if they separate the feet, but again, just forming that intention. And four or five in the opposite direction. Nice and slowly. And you only have to lift the legs slightly off the floor. Lovely. Well, let's do a little bit of foot gym now, like we often do with the hands. We've separated. And I'm going to begin one in one direction. Get that going first. Talking, hopefully, to the feet and begin the other one in the opposite direction. Now, this isn't a test, Jokies. It's just merely having a go, communicating all the way down from your brain to your feet. And sometimes it works and other times it doesn't, but it's just about having a go, a little bit of fun. Well done, let's pause. Should we try in the other direction? Have a go if you can. So firstly, get the opposite foot to go in one direction and the other one in the opposite direction. And today it seems to be happening for me, but not always. But again, just see if you can have a go. But don't worry if it's not happening. I just want you to have a go. And again, form that intention. And then release. Well done, yogis. Now, if your feet are still a little bit cold, just start to march them on the spot. Although this requires the whole leg to be involved, it warms the capillaries and the nerve endings in the sole of the foot. And you can always put your socks back on now if you need to. Just do that a few more times and then come to stillness. Lovely. Now, one thing I would like us to do is the wiper blade, the last bit of footwork, you know, specifically in the feet. So we raise the feet again, slightly apart, and it's called wiper blades. And wouldn't we need those on today with all the rain? As if we were a pair of wiper blades, just gently moving the feet from side to side. And that stretches the sides of the feet quite nicely. 
And sometimes, again, it can feel a little awkward. Make sure your knees and hips don't mind the movement too much as well. Once more from side to side and give them a little shake. Lovely. Place them down. We'll move straight into the knee now. Well, let's just move forwards a little bit. We'll do a knee crank. Now, that's a horrible word, but that's what it's called in yoga. But we won't be so harsh. From the knee down to the foot, we want to move. How are we going to do that? We take the hands, hold on to alternate elbows or wrists underneath the right thigh. Come forwards a little bit on your chair. Leave your left foot on the floor. And just start to make as wide a circles as you can. Lovely. Now, I'm going to do six today. There's three. If you prefer just to do three, half what I give you, absolutely fine. That's it, as wide a circles as you comfortably can. Now in the opposite direction with the same leg, the right leg, between three and six. And this is a strengthening, healing, but also energizing movement for the knee joint. But take care, and if you find this a bit tricky, then do skip it if you need to. And I'm gonna release, switching sides. So Again, if you can, interlace underneath uh, the left thigh, holding on to the uh, wrists or the elbows if you can. Try and sit tall, it's not easy. Right foot anchored down, that's your stability there. And here we go. And I don't know about anybody else as I do this, but one knee definitely feels slightly easier. The other side more challenging. Again, go gently if you're on the more sensitive side of your body. And again, in the opposite direction now, between three and six knee cranks, just as wide a circles as you comfortably can. Okay, one more, if you've done up to six, both directions, and place the knees down. Well done. Now, if that was too hard, let me give you something else. Now we're going to interlace again underneath the right knee. I've purposefully sat back so that, again, my spine's next to the back of the chair supported and this time yoga so i'm going to interlace underneath the right knee draw it in and simply straighten and i flex the toes as well and we do six of those inhale and exhale breathing in now not only are we doing obviously anti-rheumatic group of exercises but we're warming and energizing the joints so even if you've been up three or four hours you won't have necessarily opened all of the joints, the major joints in the body. So these exercises are insurance policy, keeping your joints strong. And they're worth doing every day if you can remember. So left side, interlace underneath the left knee, sit tall. You're gonna inhale as you draw the left knee into the chest. Exhale, now as you stretch, flex those toes towards your left foot. Keep the foot switched on. Breathing in, look forwards, breathing out. Flex the toes, good, up to six if you can, or just do three on each side if that's easier for you today. Two more, inhale, exhale again, maybe noticing one side feels easier than the other. Down we go, well done. So that's a nice alternative if the ankle crank and the knee crank felt too strong. Well, yogis, we're gonna come forwards and just work into the hip a little bit now. So what we're going to do, separate the feet quite wide, so toes are out, heels turned in like me, and then just start to draw that right knee in and out. So you're actually rolling out, can you see I'm rolling out onto the outer edge of my right foot. So I'm really sort of feeling all the different parts of the foot here. And in and out, and we do six, breathing in, breathing out, that's it. So it's just at the moment, just moving that right leg in and out, opening into my inner and outer hip region. We can feel that also working a little bit into the thigh and the knee. I'll make this the last one. And then bring that leg in, left side, inhaling, exhaling. And just rolling out to the outer edge of the left foot if you can. Now very often again with this exercise, we may notice differences in our hip. So go gently if you've got hip issues. Gently if you've got knee issues. Uh, don't avoid this if you can't. If you if hope you can't, that's fine. But if you can do this, it's really super for the hip and the pelvis re pelvic region. So if you can do just one or two of those, that's brilliant. Now that's my last one. So I bring legs in and I just give them a little shake. 
What I'd like us to do is one more exercise that's going to benefit the knee and the hip. And what we're going to do is bend the right knee and bring the right ankle over to the left thigh. Now, I appreciate that can feel quite strong for many of us, but it's worth the wait. The outer hip, the right hip, and the outer knee, the right knee, are both now being opened and energized, okay? And that's why we can often feel that sort of pull on the outside of the right hip, because we're really opening up into those joints. Joints that often feel tight, particularly buttock area and outer hip if we're doing more walking, or if we're maybe sitting more than usual. Now what you can do with your, your left hand is try and nip the toes. So what I mean by that is place one or two, if you can, through your toes. Not often we can't do all of them, it doesn't matter. But just one or two, holding onto the right knee with the right hand, and just bend very gently the toes backwards and forwards. So you've tried to slide the toes or the fingers into the toes with your left hand, just bending backwards and forwards. And this is a great stretch for the toes. That's it, one or two more and release, lovely. Now, if your foot's cold, just rub the hands quickly, generate a little bit of heat, grab some oil. I always say to people, if you've got some foot oil, a carrier oil or essential oils you want to use, now's the time. And stroke up, just stroke the foot up towards the heart. So we always move up the body. So this helps with circulation again. And it's a great way of just soothing out the feet if they're chilly, but just also being very kind to the feet. Once more and release. Now we've been there a long time. So the last part is to hold onto the foot with the left hand, right hand on the right knee, Make sure again that your ankle is free and take a deep breath in with me and fall forwards. Now, as you fall forwards, I want you to look forwards ahead of your body along the floor and you feel that opening in the hip region. Again, it may feel tight for some people, it may feel less for others. Again, we'll find out on the other side. But just let the shoulders relax. Let's switch on that deep breathing now. So we're gonna take two more deep breaths here, breathing in. Breathing out, that's it. Take another deep breath in if you can. Fold a little further forwards from your hips, but don't force that movement. Inhale and exhale here. And then I want you to sit up, well done. Now this is really important to hug the knee in very carefully before you release. Excellent. Could you feel that here, outer hip, maybe out in the area, Whew, you work really well. And we're gonna do the other side now. So carefully, when you're ready, bend the left knee, bring that left ankle across, make sure again, it's on the fleshy part of the thigh, not too near the knee, and that your left ankle is nice and free. Try and knit the toes if you can. So with your right hand, sliding the fingers through one or all of the toes if you can, but don't force it. And then just gently moving backwards and forwards. It's a wonderful stretch. Often people do this and say, oh, my toes feel as if they're spread out more or longer even. And it is, it's giving a massive stretch to the toes, which is gonna help with your balance, with your posture and how you stand later on. So it really does, pardon the pun, stand you in good stead for the rest of your day ahead. It really does. Great stretch for the toes. Again, doesn't matter whether you've got one finger through one toe or all of them. Just have a go if you can. Once more and release. Again, let's rub the hands together vigorously. Lots of work on the feet today. It's really nice, isn't it? To have to spend a little TLC, quality time, nurturing one part of our body. I think it makes us really respect one part of our body. And today it's, I guess, the feet. And we're going to up. It's a lovely massage. Chair yoga is about many things. It's not just about making shakes and pumping and you know getting hot and sweaty. It's also about looking after yourself from the chair. Okay, so a lovely little massage. Use some oils if you want to, or some nice foot cream if you have it. Always work up again towards the heart to improve the circulation. That's it, particularly when we think about how far the feet are, the extremities away from the heart. That's going to go a long way down, hasn't it? And back up again. Okay, lovely. Then we're going to hold on to the foot. We're going to sit tall. And we're now going to focus on the outer knee and outer hip as we 
hinge forwards from the hips. So our hips are squared and we hinge forwards. And our point of focus, known in yoga as our drishti, we're going to gaze towards the floor, relax the shoulders away from the ears. We don't want to be like this, we want to be relaxed. And just coming as far forward, so torso towards your thighs. Hold and breathe for two more deep breaths if you can. And while you're here, yogis, again, just notice I find this side more tricky, so my knee is higher, so I find I have less flexibility on this side. And just notice if that's the same for you, you or the other side felt more challenging, maybe this side is easier. Just note that in your own bodies as you breathe. Good, okay, let's inhale together, come up on the exhale. Remember, hug the knee in carefully and release and straighten back to the floor gently. Well done. And just, you know, zigzag the feet in, zigzag the knees in rather. That's it. And hopefully, whew, make it feel a little warmer there. Grab some water if you need to, and we'll move straight into the upper body now for the joint work there. But if, if you can, just sort of stretch and give the legs a little wiggle and stretch. Even march on the spot and notice if those lower halves feel a bit more open now, okay? Hopefully they do. I'm just going to check the time. Brilliant. It's coming up to 12. So we'll spend a few minutes on the upper body and then we'll move on. Now, when you're ready, take a deep breath in and out. Sit tall, yogis. That's it. Just remind yourself to breathe. Bring the arms to shoulder height for me with the palms down and scrunch up the, uh, well, we make a loose fist, scrunch up the fingers like you did the feet. Exhale and stretch away. And we'll do six more. Breathing in, breathing out. Now the key here as well is not to overstrain the fingers. So as you open them, make sure you're stretching, but not straining the, the joints and the ligaments there. One or two more. Use the breath if you wish to. Inhale here. Exhale and open. I'm going to do one more with you. Breathing in, breathing out. Lovely. Now shake it out. That's it. Just shake it out with the loose wrist. Open and close the fingers and shake it out up and down again. Just loosens all those areas for a moment as well. Lovely. We're going to move straight into the wrist. So let's make two loose fists again in line with the shoulders, elbows straight. And let's just start to rotate inwards 10 times if we can. Lovely. So just as you did with your ankle joints, you're now untying, untying the wrist joints, removing stiffness. Go gently. If there's any discomfort, you can stop if you need to, remember. And then about 10 in the opposite direction. So now the wrist joints moving away. Rest of the body is fairly still, keeping the spine tall and breathing just a nice relaxed breath. Pause when you need to. Just like the feet, we're gonna begin one in one direction and the other in the opposite direction. Well done. So again, brain communicating with the body, wonderful for physical health, but also great for cerebral health, the brain health. So it's brain and body gym, I call it. And then pause. Let's start in the opposite direction. Go slowly, just start one wrist if you can in one direction and the other in the opposite direction. Keep your head and neck relaxed and the breath as well. Lovely work, well done. Nicely done, yogis. Thanks for trying that, it's not easy. And shake it out, release. But it's worth having a go, yeah? It connects your brain with your body. The two are one homogenous unit, okay? They're not separate, they're together. And we're just bringing them closer. Great work, okay. Should we move straight into the elbow, then the shoulder, and we'll do a little work in the neck if that's comfortable. So elbow, take the arms to shoulder height for me, palms out to the side, facing the ceiling. Breathing in, bring them in. Breathing out and open. Try four more. Inhale, exhale, and just when you open them, hold that for a moment. Just get that opening in the shoulder joint and the elbow. Inhale here, exhale. Try three more with me. Breathing in, breathing out. Lovely, two more, inhale. Exhale, lovely, last one, breathing in, breathing out. Now begin one in and one out, just alternate. One, we'll do 10, and two, and three, inhale, and four, exhale. Good, keep going, five, 
Turning the arm, six, good. And seven. And eight, two more. Nine, lovely. Last one, and 10. And then you're going to leave the fingertips, if you can, on the shoulders. Just start straight into the shoulder joint with those little rotations. We're moving the elbows forwards. I always like to imagine or visualize that we've got pencils, very sharp pencils on the end of the elbows. And we're just trying to draw small circles in a forwards direction. Head and neck are relatively still. And I'm just moving into the shoulders. Look, you'd like to close the eyes as you do this. Keep your breath relaxed if you can. And then pause and go in the opposite direction. So small little circles in a backwards direction now. Imagine you're trying to draw little accurate circles with those pencils on the end of the elbows. Lovely. And this really does start to ease gently into the shoulders, which again may cause a lot of pain and stiffness for us. Lovely. Let's do one more. And then keeping them there, if you can, I want you to just see if you can draw a big zero in front of your nose now and separate the elbows. Breathing in, looking forwards, breathing out as you separate. And go slowly, two more if you can. Please don't worry if your elbows don't touch. That's not the end game, it's just about having a go. Lovely. And in the opposite direction now, big circles in a backwards direction. Doesn't matter if the elbows don't touch. This really does improve the range of motion that's often limited here. One more if you can. Excellent, well done. Release, relax, and then just enjoy rolling your shoulders back five times slowly. Oh, and if it's still stiff in these areas, which it might be, go gently. And then five in a forwards direction. That's it. Just noticing if you feel you've created a little more space in this area. Perhaps it just feels a little bit looser. Lovely. And then we're going to bring one up, one down. Shoulder shrug. Let's inhale and exhale. Keep the head and neck relaxed. Breathe in. Breathe out. Five more. One. Good. And two. And three. And four. Last one, yogis. And five. And again, roll back a couple of times. And forwards. Lovely work, well done. And then just shake it out. That's it, just have a moment to relax and release everything. And we'll move straight into the neck to finish, okay? So again, if you've got neck issues, by all means leave this pose out if you wish to. And again, if there's any discomfort, then do please stop. Let's turn the head carefully to the left. Take a breath in. Smile, draw a smile with the chin and nose. Take it all the way down slowly. Exhale, and there we are, to the right. Nice and slowly, we want to glide, let's go again. Inhale if you can, down we go, draw a smile with the chin and the nose. Exhale to the left, and again if you can, breathing in, smile with the chin and nose. Exhale, to the right. Last time again, Yogi, so we finish Looking towards the left, inhale, again, gliding slowly, and exhale back to the left. And then bring your head back to the central position and relax and roll those shoulders forwards and back. Well done. But how's the back of the neck today? Let's do one exercise. All I do here is just profile myself to the side so you can see the movement more clearly. Make sure you're sitting tall, yogis, hands resting on your thighs. Take a nice deep breath in and slowly and gently drop the chin to the chest. Relax the shoulders away from the ears. Hold for one, two seconds. When you're ready to exhale, do so and bring the head back to the central position. Now, if you find you're a bit dizzy, you can stop, okay? Otherwise, we're going to continue and do two more slowly. Here we go. Breathing in. Chin to chest, relax the shoulders away from the ears. Exhale and bring your head back to the center. 
One more if that's comfortable, yogis. Here we go. Breathing in. Chin to chest. Feel that lovely stretch all the way down to the low back. Do relax the shoulders. Exhale when you're ready to and bring the head carefully back. And just relax here. Take a nice resting deep breath in and out. That's it. Exhale. Nicely done. Well, yogis, come back now. That's all the major joints done. And I'm just checking the time. Yep, it's just gone 12. So we're going to crack on. Now that you're all nice and warm and energized, have one more shake out. Grab some water. Keep hydrated. And we're going to start to energize a little more by marching on the spot. Okay, so we want to get that blood flowing and the heat going. Do as much or as little of this as you can again. Stop if I'm going too fast, slow it down if you need to, okay? So we're going to grab our cans. I'm going to do some marching on the spot. So I'm going to march with my cans, making sure I grip them carefully because I've got no socks on. Don't want to hit our chin or toes. Again, use your own weights if you wish to, but a nice option if you don't want to use cans, you feel, no, that's not for you today. And can I ask you to make two loose fists and just do all of the movements, all of the arm movements that we do, all the marching, but with two loose fists as an alternative, okay? Don't feel you have to use the cans. They're simply there as an opportunity for those that want to use them. Okay, so let's start to march. Keep the feet slightly apart, raise the knees as high as you can, but to start with, just a steady, nice, relaxed marching on the spot. So we're warming up the feet again. Now we're gonna add the arms. Here we go. Marching, swinging gently, grip those cans with care, please. If you've got little weights, again, just make sure that you feel comfortable. And we're gonna do this for 20 seconds. Count with me if you can, up to 20. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, breathe, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, good, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Great. Now, leave your hands on your lap with care. Take a deep breath in and out. Good, okay, and we go for 20 more seconds again. Okay, let's go. One, two, three, four, we're building five, all the energy, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and 10 more if you can, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, fantastic, so that's 40 seconds with a five second rest. So take a deep breath in and out. You may notice you're feeling a little warmer already. Hopefully you are, but give your body enough time to breathe. So take a deep breath in, a deep breath out, and we go again. But this time we're gonna change it. We're gonna raise the right leg, take the cans if we can into what we call an upward curl and release. Raise the left leg, Come up into a bicep curl and release. 20 seconds again. I'll be ready after three. Here we go. Do as much as you can. One, two, three. One and two. Go flex the feet towards you as you raise them. Flex those toes. And four, five and six. Slow it down if you need to. Seven. Good. And eight, nine and ten. Now take the arms out to the side. One. And two, just to shoulder height, raise alternate legs. And four, good. Five and six, lovely. Seven and eight, building the energy. Nine, last one, and 10. Good, have a five second rest, sit back, breathe in and out. Brilliant, okay, and we go again. But this time, we're going to come here up to the shoulders and over the head, bring the cans carefully together, back to the shoulders and down. And we're gonna march while we do that for 20 seconds, pause for five and aim for another 20 if you can. Remember yogis, you can stop at any point if you need to. Let's start marching. Take a deep breath in. That's it, remind yourself to breathe, breathe out, and here we go. One, two, 
three. That's it, keep going. And four, you're doing well. Slow it down if you need to. This is number five. Yes. And six, using upper, lower half of the body. And seven, lovely. Keep going if you can. Eight. Nine, remember to breathe normally here. And 10. And then we pause. Take a deep breath in and out. Brilliant, okay. Now this time we're going to march again, but we're going to bring the cans up so they're facing forwards, all the way up, back down and rest. So sort of turn the cans in towards me, to the shoulders, all the way up, back to the shoulders and down. But I'm gonna do that for 20 seconds without stopping. See if you can join me, we won't go too fast to begin with. So just working a little harder now. Stop if you need to. Let's start with the legs. Breathe in. That's it. Breathe out. Remember to breathe. Here we go. One. That's it. And two. Nice and smoothly. Grip those cans with care. And three. You're doing really well. And four. Think about all this lovely coordination with your brain and with your body. That was five. And six. And seven, good. And eight. And nine, lovely. And 10. Now let's go out to the side again. One, two, stop if you need to. Three, that's it, just a shoulder height. Four, you're doing so well. Five, and six. Seven, eight, last two, nine, last one, and ten. Brilliant. Now put those cans down. That's quite a lot of work there with the cans. Sit back. That's it. Just take a resting breath. It's important when we're doing this work to breathe and not overdo it, okay? So take a deep breath in. Well done. A deep breath out. Breathing in, breathing out, lovely. And just roll the shoulders back, give them a little shake out. Quite a lot of work with the cans there. And particularly when we were sort of going for 20, stopping, going for 20. Notice if you feel warmer, perhaps you can feel your heart rate's improved as well. And stop if you need to. Now, just gonna check the time. Wow, quarter past. So we're gonna come up for the last sort of 15 minutes, 10 at least, and work with the chair. So I want you to turn the chair as you come up to standing yogis so that it's facing you. So we're going to do the sun salutation sequence again that we've been doing all week. And if you've joined me earlier in the week, you'll have done this. If not, and it's new, I'll teach it you, don't worry. And it's called the sun salutation sequence facing a chair, okay? Facing a chair. And there's one that we did on Monday that was sitting in a chair. And I'll repeat that again next week. If this is new, go gently, I'll, I'll say it slowly. But what's lovely is it just complements everything you've done. It's gonna keep the energy flowing, keep you warm, and hopefully you'll really enjoy it as well. Maybe it's something you can do at home. What we're gonna do is face the chair. So make sure you've got enough room, move the cans out of the way, because you're gonna step back. So make sure this, the space that you have is enough for you. Palms come together, facing the chair, the sun salutation sequence. So let's take a nice deep breath in and out here. We may still be just allowing the breath to return to normal after that sequence. So breathing in and breathe out. Send the energy downwards, yogis, into those strong feet and legs. Inhale, we come up and gently back, palms together or facing, we look forwards. Exhale, this is number three, hands come to the chair, arms are straight, and I want to move back a little bit. So I have a flat back, okay? So I look down, back of the neck is long, arms strong. Bend the knees if you need to, absolutely fine if you're here. But if you can straighten the legs with care and that's comfortable, then please do so. Looking down, what a way to lengthen the spine. Let's breathe in and breathe out, good. Now, what we're going to do, we want to stretch that right side first. 
to take your left foot in between the chair leg and turn your right foot out 45 degrees. You're going to bend that front left knee, make sure it comes over the ankle, not the toes. Keep the front knee bent, plant the right heel down, turn it out about 45 degrees in that right foot. And as you bend the front knee, I hope you're feeling a little stretch in the right calf muscle. Continue to look down, keep the back of the neck long, keep the arms straight. Breathe in. That's it, breathe out. Good. Now we're going to take the right knee down, take the right knee down, leave the left knee bent, tuck the toes under the right foot for stability here, yogis, and just enjoy that stretch in that right thigh. Gaze towards, again, the chair, keep the back of the neck long, breathing in and out, then we come up and we step back into a version of downward dog. So I'm going to walk my feet as far back as I can till my arms are straight, bring my ears in alignment with my inner elbows, gaze towards my upper thighs. If your knees are bent, please don't worry, you might want to come in a little bit, but do bend the knees if you need to, otherwise legs are fairly straight, gazing towards the upper thighs and feeling that beautiful stretch in the back body. Press the palms into the chair, feel the security of the chair there for you. Breathe in. Good, this is excellent to calm frazzled nerves. Any sort of inversion like this is said to clear the head. So great if you're feeling overwhelmed or anxious. Very good stretch this and an inversion. And we come up and we go into a very gentle upward dog. So from here, I'm just going to almost push my bottom out lower my hips but raise my sternum and chest and I push all the weight into strong arms and hands and just look ahead of me. Squeeze the shoulder blades together if you can, take a breath in, a breath out, just enjoy the stretch and then very very gently I step my right foot in and I turn my left foot out, bend my front right knee and now I can feel a stretch in my back left calf muscle. Again, use the chair, so arms are strong, load the weight into the palms, look down, keep the back of the neck nice and strong. And then as you bend that front knee, really do anchor down that back heel to accentuate that stretch in the calf muscle, but take care, okay? Don't overstrain. Let's breathe in again. We're gonna now bend the left knee, take it to the floor, tuck the toes under. And again, we can sort of just very relaxed, look to the back of the chair or, or the seat of the chair and just appreciate the stretch in our left thigh now. So stretching those quadricep muscles in the left thigh. Then we come up, we step back here, flat back again. The knees can be bent but still lengthening the spine. Straighten the legs if you can. Engage, <coughs> excuse me, the tummy muscles. So we're pulling them in slightly the abdominal wall just to engage that area. Then we step forward slightly. I'm going to bend the knees, inhale, raise the arms, come up into upward salute. And as I exhale, palms back here. And that's the first salute. <clears throat> well done. We're going to do one more yogis. And the reason I'm turning the chair to the other side is so that again, you can see me more clearly on this side. Okay, so we'll do one more sun salute. Remember you're opening and energizing every part of the body, there are 12 moves. So in total, you'll have done 24 moves after this and we've still got 10 minutes to go. So here we go, <clears throat> chair facing you. One more sun salutation facing the chair sequence. Palms together. This is an opportunity to roll the shoulders back, spread the toes. Remember we did all that work on the toes, Yogi, so spread them wide on the floor. As you gaze ahead, notice if you feel more stability in your legs more grounded and centeredness in your feet. And maybe you're just more aware of your toes now, which is a great thing. Let's breathe in together. And as you exhale, send the energy downwards into the legs, into the feet. Inhale, come up and gently back. Exhale, hands come to the front of the chair. And this is our, our real sort of steadying point so we can load the weight into the palms. And again, we'll set the left foot forwards, turn the right foot back 45 degrees. As you bend that front knee, make sure you can still see the toes of the left foot. 
and enjoy a stretch in the right calf again. Take a breath in, look down, keep the back of the neck long. Make sure that that right heel is firmly planted down to achieve the stretch. Good. Then we bend the right knee, bring the knee to the floor, and I'm going to add a twist here like I did on Tuesday. So I've tucked the toes of the right foot under. I leave my right hand on the chair and I'm actually twisting to my left. Now you can either take the left hand to the left hip, look gently over the left shoulder, or you can stretch it out shoulder height behind you and hold for two breaths. If you find looking behind you is too wobbly, then can I ask you to look towards the chair because your spine is doing the work. So either here, or opening. Now keep the arms strong, gaze behind it, or look towards the back of the chair if you prefer. Lovely lunge with a seated twist, or a kneeling twist rather. Breathe in, exhale, come back, well done, and up we come. So we get a lovely twist there as well. We'll do the other side later. This is our downward dog, so legs either bent or straight if you can. Notice my arms are strong and loading the weight into the arms and the palms. But I'm going back as far as I can. That's it, I can feel the stretch a little more now. Keep the knees bent if you need to, remember. Elbows, ears in alignment with each other. Gaze towards your upper thighs and stretch as much as you wish to here, taking two deep breaths, breathing in, breathing out. Such a great stretch for the back surface of your body. All of your limbs are stretching, your arms, your legs, your spine, all getting a delicious stretch. And then we come into supported upward dog. Now that means I'm going to move forwards, come up onto the toes if you wish to, and lean slightly forwards, not particularly far, dip the hips, but raise your sternum and chest, squeeze the shoulder blades together and load the weight into the arms, straight arms like me. For those that want to work a little deeper, you can come down and lift up. Again, be very careful that you're pushing into the chair, that the chair is strong and steady. Yes, squeeze the shoulder blades, look the world in the eye. Yeah, it's a really lovely opening pose. Breathe in, exhale, push back yogi, it's very strong there. And now we're going to Take the right foot forwards and turn the left heel out. We bend that right knee, left foot and left heel anchored down. And as I gaze down, I want to bend my front knee a little more. I really feel that lovely stretch in my back left calf muscle. Again, don't strain, but see if you can hold for another breath in. Deep breath out as you just locate the stretch in the back calf muscle. Then we're going to bend that left knee carefully to the floor, tuck the toes under. And we're going to stretch now to the right. So we leave the left palm on the seat of the chair and we either take our right hand to the right hip and gaze over the right shoulder or a stronger stretch, extending the arm at shoulder height, twisting to gaze over or look to the back of the chair as you do this if you prefer. Breathe in and out twice, Yogi, so enjoy the stretch. It is a twist, so just make sure that you're not overstraining your neck as you look towards your right shoulder and beyond. Breathing in. Exhale, come back to the center. I do like that twist, it's lovely. And it's so good for our spines. We're gonna come up again. We step back, legs either straight, knees bent if you need to, but the arms definitely straight. Load the weight into your palms. And this is a flat back, okay? So it's not downward dog, it's the flat back. So we look towards the back of the, at uh, the bottom of the chair, sorry, seat of the chair. And we want to envisage that the crown of the head and the tailbone are in one lovely long line. We can engage the tummy muscles by softly pulling them in as well. to get the opportunity to engage the abdominal wall. Breathing in, breathing out. Legs are strong, but they can be bent. Doesn't matter if those knees are bent. Well done. I'm going to step forwards a little bit. Release the hands, bend the knees, inhale and rise up slowly. And exhale back into the prayer position. So we finish two rounds of the sun sequence facing a chair. Well done. Lovely work. 
Now we've got a couple of minutes left, so we're going to try supported tree. So if you've got enough energy, I want you to take the back of the chair and just hold on to it so it can go on the mat actually. So I'm going to have the back of the chair. My left hand is holding on to the chair. Now you can do this freestyle without the chair, but considering it's chair yoga, you might want to just have that little bit of extra support. I want you to load the weight in the left leg and start to bend that right knee and raise the foot off the floor. And just hold that for one or two deep breaths. If you feel you don't need the chair, take your left hand to your hip and you can hold freestyle. But the chair is there for you. Left leg is strong, gaze ahead. Now start to take that knee out and hold a variation of true. Work in your hips, right knee is out, and flex the toes upwards, using the chair or not to support you if you wish to. Now we're gonna take the sole of the right foot and rest it on the inner left calm. And I'm gonna bend my right hand and come into the cactus. So I want to squeeze now, I'm going to let go of the chair, squeeze the shoulder blades together, get the opening in the chest and come into a variation of tree. And if you find this too strong and I'm wobbling today, then take your hand back to the chair and use the chair. But I want you to take that elbow back, both if you can, palms facing forward, so you get the lovely lift and stretch in the upper chest. Breathe and hold. And again, if you're using the chair, that's fine. Do what feels comfortable for you. One more deep breath here, yogis. Breathe out and then take the hands down, carefully bring the knee in and straighten and just shake it out. Good. Let's try the other side. So it's nice sometimes to do a variation of a pose. And again, this is the tree pose. It's our last pose. So right leg is strong. Load the weight into the right leg and just as you look ahead, Bend the left knee, raise it off the floor and hold for a breath. Use the back of the chair or your hip if you prefer to support you. Take the left knee out, that's it. Flex the toes, feel the opening in the hip region as well here. Breathe, well done. And then if you can, the sole of the foot resting, remember not on the knee joint, just below on the outer edge of that calf muscle, the right leg. Bend that left knee left elbow even, <laughs> squeeze it back. If you can raise the other hand, have a go. Cactus style, I like this, opens the chest. If you're wobbly, go back to the chair. Remember, it's fine to use the chair. There's always an option, always an adaptation. Just do what feels comfortable. Gaze ahead and breathe. Well done, yogis. We've come to the end of the practice. So let's take another deep breath in, release. Bring the knee in, shake it out. Well done, yogis. Oh, look at that, it's half past. I think we've got another minute. Wow, it goes so quickly, doesn't it? But let's just come back to sitting and let's close the practice. Bring the thumb, the long finger, the ring finger together. Turn the palms uppermost again. Come back into that energy seal. Thumb, long finger and ring finger touching. Roll the shoulders back. Close the eyes if you can. And just enjoy five slow breaths with me, yogis. Coming back into the energy seal. And using this time just to breathe and let the body soften and relax. And stay here for as long as you wish to in the energy seal. Again, just drawing your awareness back to your breathing. Letting the body settle. Take a moment if you can, just to observe physically how you now feel. Having completed an hour of chair yoga, just notice how you now feel as you breathe in and breathe out with me. Just noticing how you now feel as we come to the end of our practice, hopefully feeling more energized and more open in our joints and body and a little warmer and ready and prepared for the rest of the day ahead. Breathing in, breathing out, 
Breathing in once more. And as you exhale, yoga is just gently opening the eyes. Relax the body, release the fingers. When you're ready, take a deep breath in, gather your energies. And as you exhale, bring them down to your heart center. Take a moment to wish your body and your breath well. Well done, yogis, for doing so well today. I'm Shanti Peace. Go well. See you soon. Bye for now. Take care.